In this video, we're going to talk about the basic principles of operation for a motor control circuit. So stick around. Welcome back to the maintenance factory. As mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about the basic principles of operation for a motor control circuit. And as we go throughout the video, if you find yourself getting some value out of it, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Okay, so let's move on to today's topic. So the reason why I want to cover the basic principles of operation for these said motor controls is because in future videos, I want to line out some potential failure modes that will exist with each component. So that will uh, set the stage for us to do some troubleshooting best practices. So the example today, we're going to draw this out on paper, so to speak. And then in future videos, we'll have some real world physical examples to look at. And that way we can take what we've learned on paper and apply that to the real world examples. So let's get started by drawing a three phase circuit, a motor, a contactor, and then we'll uh, follow up by drawing in the additional circuitry for the controls portion. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is draw out three phases of power. And if you were to look at an electrical print or drawing, you'll probably more than likely see three vertical lines. They might be labeled L1, L2, and L3, and they'll probably have a note designating the uh, power. In this case, it would be 480 volts AC. And now the next thing we want to do is draw in the motor and the uh, uh, contactor for this. So let's come over here and draw us a motor and we're going to label it M1. And then we need to next draw in a contactor. And this will take just a little bit of time here. And what I'm going to do is draw the overload portion of the contactor as well as the line side connections here. Okay, so the three dots here represent that the uh, line side of the contactor is connected to L1, L2, and L3. And this section of the contactor is the actual contactor itself, and this portion of the contactor is the overload circuit. Now, I've got that drawn just a little bit backwards, but uh, just forgive me. So uh, we also need to draw in a coil here that's connected to this contactor, but we're going to do that in a separate portion of the drawing and as well as some other components related to the overload and the contactor itself. Now this overload device is simply a protection device that will protect the motor in case a fault occurs and in its normal state it will be uh, closed so to speak so that current can pass from this side to this side of the overload and then when the overload uh, sees a problem with the motor, say it's an overcurrent situation, then all three of these components will go to an open state and then therefore uh, terminating the path for current to flow. Now the contactor itself is a normally open device in the sense that from this point to this point, current cannot flow in its normal state. It has to change states and you do that by energizing the coal for the contactor. And we're going to get into that in just a second. So let's continue on by drawing a uh, control transformer. And we're going to connect it to L2 and L3. And then we need the secondary side of this transformer. And this is not to scale. So in other words, uh, my drawing does not reflect turns ratio whatsoever. So on the line side or the primary side of this transformer, it's connected to L2 and L3, which will be 480 volts AC. On the secondary side, we're going to say that steps down to 120 volts AC, which is just a little bit more user friendly. And then we're going to continue this on out and uh, we'll put an arrow there and a ground symbol there. And one side of this transformer, uh, is normally going to be grounded to the chassis or the housing of the equipment or motor starter bucket and then that will find its way back to earth ground and let's uh, just name it x2 and x1 and now 
what I want to do is add a protection device for the control circuit and we'll just say it's a fuse we're going to label it F1 now from that fuse we need to continue the other portion of the control circuit and we'll put an arrow on it similar to we did that now the reason why I've done that is because in many electrical prints or drawings the motor portion of the drawing may be on a separate page from where the control circuitry is and oftentimes on the control circuits where you have your 120 volts of power you may see a couple of lines that denote that this continues on to a second page and oftentimes than not you'll actually have a little note drawn out that says you know continues to page two or continues to page three wherever it picks up next so let's begin next by drawing in the actual controls portion of the circuit that's going to allow us to control the state of that contactor. So the first thing we want to do is draw in a stop button. And the stop button is a normally closed button. And we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it PB1 for push button 1. Now we also need to draw a start button, which will be a normally open button. And we're going to call it PB2 for push button two. And then, like I said, it's normally open. And then the next thing we need to do is draw in a contact for the overloads and then draw in the call. And let's call the call uh, M1. And that will kind of designate that this call is specifically related to controlling this contactor that supplies power to M1. Now, this symbol here represents a normally closed set of contacts that will physically exist on this overload right here. So like I said before, when this overload is in its regular state, it will have a set of contacts on it that are normally closed, not only for each phase of power for the motor, but also an auxiliary contact that we can use to put into this control circuit. Now, uh, before we go any further, because there's one very important uh, piece of information left out. I want to review what we have and walk through the steps on how this circuit would work in its current uh, state. So once again, we have our three phases of power coming in, 480 volts AC, it's three phases, and we know that because there's three lines. Each line is connected to the line side of the contactor, labeled L1, L2, and L3. The contactor has another device attached to it called an overload protection device, and then we have the motor. Now, up here we have our control power transformer, which is connected to L2 and L3. It's taking 480 volts AC, and it is stepping it down to 120 volts AC. And then that 120 volts AC is what we're going to use to control the state or the condition of this contactor. Now, we have the coil that's going to control this contactor. And uh, I don't have the best contactor drawing here, but let's say here's call M1 and there's some physical connection between this call and these three contact points here and then we have the normally closed button I forgot to write my note normally closed and this is for overload so we'll just call it OL and uh, it's related to this portion right here and then we have our stop button which is normally closed and it's labeled as PB1 and then we have a start button that is normally open and it's labeled PB2. Now, what we need to do in order to get the motor to rotate is provide electrical power to the coil. And whenever that coil has the correct voltage, it's going to form an electromagnetic field. And once it generates an electromagnetic field, it's going to pull a iron core together that is physically attached to these three contact points and once it pulls on that iron core, it's going to pull those three contacts close. Once it pulls the three contacts close, that's going to allow for current to pass on phase one, phase two, and phase three, and therefore it's going to generate rotation in the motor. So let's say that we would come along and then depress the start button, which is PB2. It's going to switch states from normally open to normally closed or to closed, and then that's going to provide a path for current to flow and it's going to energize that coil thus for closing the contacts providing power to the motor and then the motor will then rotate 
Now that's fine and dandy if we want to sit here and continuously hold our finger on this button the entire time we expect the motor to perform work. But that's not an ideal condition. Let's say, for example, this is an exhaust fan motor or an intake fan motor, and we don't want to sit here and hold our finger on the start button all day long. So the vital piece that is missing is the memory circuit or the holding circuit, and what we're going to do is draw it in next. Now, where that would need to go, let's get my state of this button correct, normally open. So now this holding circuit or this memory circuit needs to go in across this start button. And where we're going to get that at is from this contactor. This contactor off to the side will have another normally open auxiliary contact and we're going to call it aux one. Now what we need to do is draw this auxiliary contact in series or excuse me in parallel with the start button. So let's put it right here and we'll label it aux one. And the reason why I want to label it because remember from this portion down could be on a different page of an electrical drawing and you won't get to see these things side by side. So the name of this is very important. Just like the name of this and the name of the coil. And it all needs to relate to one another on the print so that when you're troubleshooting, you'll actually be able to read the print and follow along and know what you're looking at. So let's go back and review how this circuit would then work. So we would go back to the start button. We would depress the start button current would then flow across the circuit here getting to the coil energizing that coil creating that electromagnetic field thus closing these three contacts now simultaneously as these three contacts close this auxiliary contact will close so right here that will go to a closed state now at that time the motor will obviously begin its rotation and now as we release the start button this auxiliary contact provides that path for current to flow. So now current is going to flow in this direction to the coil, keeping the coil energized, therefore keeping the uh, contactor closed and continuing to rotate the motor. Now, whenever we want to stop the circuit, simply all we would need to do is depress the uh, normally closed stop button. Once that stop button is open, this path for current will be broken. And then this current path will no longer occur and therefore it's going to uh, de-energize that coil and the electromagnetic field will then collapse. After the electromagnetic field collapses, there will be a spring in here that will push against these four contacts, including that auxiliary contact. And once it pushes against that, it will open all of these contact points the path for current to flow to the motor will be broken and then the motor will then start to coast down to a stop. And I think that just about wraps it up. Um, so if you uh, have any questions or concerns or if there's anything I missed, you know, feel free to comment down below and I'll either answer those questions directly or we will answer them in a future video or maybe this will spin off to a whole nother video that I need to create. And uh, if you need me to back up one step and kind of explain each of these components in better detail, I can also do that too. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got some value out of it. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and leave a thumbs up on the video. And I'll see you next time.